Check the description for the following discount codes. Today's review is of the Alpine Racing TRX cockpit from the guys at Track Racer. Now this is a tubular style cockpit that promises the ability to be able to switch between Formula and GT positions relatively easily within minutes, it says, not within seconds. So a realistic uh, you know, time frame there. You've got to move a few things around the seat, the pedal tray, um, adjust some angles. Um, it's also in conjunction with the Alpine Racing Team, hence the, the colours, you know, the livery and the design of it. And this is to everyone's taste. There's a few different ones available. We've got the one we see here, which is the 2023 livery, I believe. Uh, and then you've got 2022 available as well. And then it's also available in just plain black, if you can see that on the screen now. I'm not sure if you can, but you can check on the website. There'll be a link and there may even be a discount. I'm not sure. It will say it in the link if there is, um, but it's available right now for pre-order and the delivery time is showing mid-August. So only a couple of weeks away. Now, this comes with so you've got a choice of, let's just, just very briefly read what it says here. Developed alongside the Alpine F1 engineers. You know, um, this is always interesting when uh, companies collaborate with, you know, real life racing teams. You wonder just how much input they really have. But, you know, maybe we'll see once we get it assembled and try it out. But developed alongside Alpine F1 engineers, switch between Formula and GT seating position in minutes, as I said a minute ago. Beautifully designed and extremely adjustable with optional integrated monitor stands. It includes seat slider rails, seat brackets, gear shift amount, and more sliding adjustment on the wheel mount and the pedal mount. The Alpine Racing TRX is equipped as standard with Fnatic side mount compatibility. So if you've got a Fnatic direct drive wheelbase, you can bolt that straight to the side. And to install, remove the standard wheel plate and install your Fnatic wheelbase using the included side mount spaces. Refer to the manual, blah, blah, blah. So that's just a quick summary of what it is and what it offers. Adjustability on sliders, a quick change around from GT to Formula One, and there's been an input from the Alpine racing team themselves. So hopefully we have a good experience here. The price currently 1,399 British pounds. Obviously that will be whatever it will be in your relevant countries around the world. Click through, have a look. And one thing I will say is my first impressions of this is that it is hefty. It came on a pallet. In fact, I'm gonna put up a picture now of how it arrived. What you see there is everything that's now on the floor here in front of me, unboxed. So inside those boxes that you see on the pallets was preformed polystyrene designed to hold everything exactly in its place during transit. And what you see here, I haven't partially assembled this. This is how it has come out of its packaging. So the seat base and rear half of the cockpit is one unit here, the pedal deck, and tray is assembled as, can you see that in the shot? Yeah, you can, yes, it's there, is assembled as one. Uh, and then the seat comes fully assembled as well. So really, we've just got the two sort of front side pieces to slot on and a couple of other little brackets and it should come together relatively quickly and easily. So we'll have a quick look quick close up at some of these bits and bobs. I'm not gonna pick this up and carry it to the camera because it's really quite heavy. Everything here is steel rather than aluminium. So obviously aluminium is quite light, steel isn't. So this is, I say everything's steel actually, I don't know everything's steel. These pieces might be aluminium. I should have got a magnet to check. But the main structural part of the cockpit, the tubular stuff is all steel. Um, this could well be aluminium because there's no reason for it to be steel. But let's have a quick peek, a quick peek at this bracket. For example, here, it is at least, I'm gonna say that's probably, that's probably 10 mil thick. And these sort of pre-drilled holes that aren't slotted, they're individually drilled as you can see, and nicely sort of tapered and beveled, no sharp edges, really nice finish there. That's great because when you then sort of move your thumb screws from hole to hole to hole, 
it can't then work its way loose and slip like it could if it was just a smooth slot. So that's nice. So yeah, that's quite, quite thick and hefty. The, this is the shift amount. And this is steel because it weighs an absolute ton considering its size. So this is definitely steel. Uh, and again, it's, it's powder coated, got a nice finish to it. This looks like the part where you would actually bolt shifters or handbrakes potentially to. Although saying that we have got, you know, slots here as well. We'll see, you know, once I get it all together exactly how it operates. The only thing I did notice, and you'll notice too here, is some of the paint has been scraped off as if these two have slid up and down, um, you know, prior to me getting hold of it. Now, in use, if you are sliding this up and down, that is going to happen because painted surfaces, you know, are not rock hard. You will take the paint off. It's just the way it goes. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got this piece here, which goes across the top of the cockpit. In fact, you can see it, if you can see this, you can see it is up there and your monitor mount uh, attaches to this. This I would say is steel, again, because it's heavy for its size. And this is probably, what should we say that is, four mil thick, something like that. Pretty hefty, again. And like I say, heft is, what, is a good way to describe this thing. Everything is big and heavy and solid, um, but also, Nice looking. I'm a fan of tubular cockpits. I, I really like the, the look of a tubular cockpit. Do you, even the basic ones like a GT Mega Titan just looks neat and tidy compared to, you know, the long lengths of aluminium profile that we're all used to seeing in high-end cockpits. So this is this is one of the seat runners. Um, even this, and I've, I've had many different seat sliders in my hands over the years, both working on cars, you know. Um, and in sim racing, and this has got some weight to it for a, for a rail, for a slider. So that implies it's a decent quality one, which again is nice. It has got quite a bit of oil still on it. You can see it glistening there. So someone's got a little bit carried away with their lubrication, so I'll need to give that a bit of a wipe. I've made sure that a dry side is sat on my carpet because obviously, I don't want oil on my carpet, do I? This is my front room, after all. And the reason we're doing this in the front room is because I didn't want to have to carry all this heavy stuff up the stairs into my games room where my sim rig is and where I normally do my reviews. I thought, no, this one's, this one's getting built in the front room, Cole. Um, and in some ways, it's a nice environment to do things. We've got a big screen here I can show things on, so not a bad place to shoot a video anyway. Um, but I don't have any sort of real proper lighting in here. So hopefully this will all come out okay. I won't know until I go to edit it. Um, so we'll have a close up of the seat because that isn't heavy and I can pick it up and bring it over there. We've got this nice sort of pleated finish on the cushioning both the bottom and the back upright and the little bolsters. These little bolsters do all come out. They're velcroed on. There's the sort of pleated Pleated or quilted? Quilt, quilt, quilted finish, or is it pleated? No, pleats are what you have in a skirt, horizontally, vertically, sorry. Yeah, this is quilted, I think. Who cares, whatever that pattern is, is whatever that pattern is. But there's Velcro on the back, and so you can stick them where you want. And the same goes for the smaller ones, and for the headrest up there, and even this main back piece. We've got some vents or gaps here, potentially for putting harnesses through. They are only plastic though, so you wouldn't want to put anything too sort of um, too strong through there. Maybe you've got a very active motion system or active seat belts. This is obviously the back of the seat with the design on, which looks very nice. Overall, I really like the look of this seat and it looks like it's going to be comfortable and it is included in the price. A lot of these um, cockpits that I review uh, when I review the cockpit and I give the price of it, a lot of the time it doesn't include a seat because seats are optional. And sometimes people don't pick up on that when they're watching the review. This one does include the seat. So everything you see here comes in at that price. And the price is definitely on the high end, 1400 notes, not cheap. But so far I'm seeing good build quality, heavy construction, heavy materials, and a nice powder coated, presumably, finish and the potential for lots of adjustability 
uh, and strength as well, of course. I think this is somewhere on here, we might look at that later once it's built, about being able to use the highest of high-end direct drive wheels and there being no flex. And also, I believe it says, in fact, where's my keyboard? I'll have a quick look. I'm sure it says the pedal tray can take up to 180 kilograms of braking force without any flex. I definitely read that on here. There it is. Alpine Racing TRX have been improved to withstand up to 180 kilograms of braking force without flex. You know, that's, that's a bold claim because looking at the pedal tray, if this is indeed it, it's just, again, this is quite heavy, so I can't really pick it up and show you. There's no supports running lengthways or crossways. There's just this plate itself, sort of on the sides with thumb screws. So we'll see how that actually holds up. Because when GT Amiga had a pedal tray like that for the original Prime, if you mounted the pedals not using the outermost reaches of that style of tray, like if you mounted them using sort of securing points in the middle, you would get a little bit of flex. Or uh, if, you, if you, I saw somebody raise them up on spacers, which added a whole load of leverage, that would make it flex a little bit. For most of us, it was never an issue, and it wasn't for me either, because mine were mounted in the four corners. But like if you mounted three individual pedals, for example, and I think the same would apply here, if you had one mounted in the middle here, whereby its fixing points are quite far from the edges, which is where the metal is bent at 90 degrees and where it's, it's most rigid, you're gonna find that's gonna flex in the middle. But they reckon 180 kilograms of braking force. Now, I don't have a pedal set that registers 180 kilograms of braking force, but I can certainly give all the strength my leg can offer when we do have some pedals on here to see if it does flex or not. So that will be interesting because from experience, that could do with some more bracing underneath there. I mean, maybe some, maybe once I get it together, some of these parts do help to brace it. We'll see, I might be jumping the gun, but just an observation, you know, from the off, so to speak. Everything's hefty, pedal tray doesn't seem so hefty. But I think that's probably all I need to show you for now. I mean, we've got bags of bits and bobs, but not many bags of bits and bobs some bolts and some nuts and washers, Allen keys and spanners, uh, some more bolts and some spring washers, what looks like a couple of collars with grub screws in, and this bag is full of more of these style of thumb screws, just wrapped in white paper, and then four little brackets here, which I'm gonna guess perhaps help secure the back to the front once it's all slotted together. But that is my next task. Let's get it all slotted together. There's also feet already pre-installed. How heavy were these? Not too bad, let's pick this up. There's, um, I have back problems, so I do have to be careful. So it even comes with the feet, rubber feet pre-installed on the bottom. Obviously not on the back there, because that slots into the rear half. But you see what I mean? It's all, it's all pretty much assembled. It ain't gonna take much for me to throw this together. Probably took me longer to un unbox it and it's gonna to be to put it together because it took me bloody ages to unbox it. Because as you see in that picture of the pallet, loads of boxes, loads of packaging. But that meant it got here safely uh, without any damage, so that's good. We've got one other thing I suppose I should show. We've got a couple of these that go with the two different sliders. Presumably one's for the seat and will be here. And the other one's either gonna be for wheel deck or more than likely pedal tray, I would imagine. But we shall see, because I've only got one pair of sliders. So I've only got one pair of sliders, but two of these. What is the second one for? I ask myself. Ah, there's some sliders, okay, already installed on here. So that's how it works. This will just slot in the middle. So that will allow us to move our pedal tray forwards and backwards. Cool, it's gonna be an interesting little build and an interesting cockpit. Quite looking forward to it. Thanks to Track Racer for sending it over and getting me involved. Looks like a bit of fun. So let's get it all together and then we'll have a little look around once it's assembled Then I'll get some equipment on it and spend a bit of time testing it.
So here it is all assembled. It actually took quite a bit longer than I was expecting. When I see it laid out on the floor and you know, a lot of the parts were pre-assembled, I thought, stupidly, it wouldn't take that long to put together. But it's still taken probably, I don't know, three hours to put together, something like that. A lot of fiddling around and lots of the bits that did need to be put on, like some of it was quite fiddly, especially some of this stuff around here where the um, wheel deck mounts. And the other issue I encountered <clears throat> was there was two, two of these bolts. Let's see if I can get a close up here, if the camera's in the right mode to focus. Yeah, two of these bolts had been put in on the wonk and the threads had been chewed off. So I had to dig out some of my own bolts, which thankfully I have a lot of kicking about because I, I do this a lot, um, to replace them because a lot of these bolts are pre-installed and then you have to remove them, slot two pieces together and then put the bolts back in and do them up. But yeah, those two, I think they were for the seat sliders at the rear here, were, had been chewed off. So I had to replace those, which was a little bit irritating. But other than that, everything went together as it should do. There is no paper assembly manual. There's just a QR code on here that you scan. Now for me, not a problem. I can have the assembly instructions on this big screen behind me, but I prefer to have a paper manual, you know, especially if I'm not doing it in a room where I've got a TV behind me that I can use. You know, a lot of you guys won't have a computer plugged into your front room TV. Um, although you may well do in your sim racing room because if you're sim racing on a PC, you can bring it up on that display, whatever display it is you race on. So maybe it isn't such an issue, but I prefer paper instructions. Uh, but you know, that's no big deal. But yeah, the two chewed off bolts were a little bit annoying. Um, now I assemble everything using the tools provided when I do these reviews, because that is the experience that you lot might get at home if you don't have your own tools. Now these Allen keys and spanner are particularly cheap, as were some of the bolts that I was doing up. The Allen key didn't fit particularly far into the head of the bolt, and I had to be very, very careful as I was doing them up not to chew the head of that bolt off. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I say they're cheap bolts and cheap Allen keys. If I compare them to say my Halford's Advanced Toolkit, which is something in the UK, is Halford is a brand, um, you know, the difference in quality between those Allen keys and the ones that come with this is night and day. Now this isn't something exclusive to Track Racer. Most of the cockpits, wheel stands, things that I build, come with pretty cheap tooling, you know. You'll get your, your kit assembled once, and by the time you've finished, the end of your Allen key is starting to look round, and you've probably chewed a couple of heads in the process. Um, but it's just one of those things. It's a little bit, a little bit of a niggle, but like I say, it's not track racer exclusive. I see it a lot. GT Amiga's no different. I think probably the best, who is it that I've seen that provide the best tools and nuts and bolts. Next Level Racing. Whenever I assemble something from Next Level Racing, their nuts and bolts, washers, and the tools they, su they supply are always top notch compared to most of the other brands that I deal with, and I probably comment on that in their videos. But this is fairly standard what we've seen here today. So as much as it's annoying for me, because you know, I appreciate good quality tools and nuts and bolts, it is just how it often is in the sim industry and probably others too, flat pack furniture is probably a good example of that. But aside from tools, couple of tube bolts, and perhaps you're know, not the best quality nuts and bolts uh, to begin with, the whole thing has come together and I think it looks really, really nice. Um, the powder coated finish, I'm assuming it's powder coated, is really nice. Everything is as hefty as my initial impressions were when I put it, you know, now that I've got it together, everything kind of comes together and, and braces itself, like this piece here, braces those, these top upright parts along with the actual wheel deck itself. I do have a couple of concerns uh, about flex and wobble. There is a lot of parts that come together here. So even just doing that, and it's wobbling up and down, and that's, that's my fingertips. Now, when there is a wheelbase bolted in here, that may disappear, but it may not because the wheelbase is going to be bolted to this plate here, not to the sides. 
You know, because if, if you bolt it to the insides here, well, the Fanatic ones actually do bolt in here. That would squeeze the sides together, provide some rigidity. I'm going to be using an Acertec wheelbase. I'm going to bolt it to this. So we've got a bit of, bit of wobble and flex there, but you've got adjustability here. You know, this, this wheel deck can slide backwards and forwards like that. And where, where there is clearance for movement, there's going to be some play. So I guess we can't really expect it to be 100% solid you know, like maybe an aluminium profile one would be, because we can just slide that in and out. And that's really, you, the, the adjustment on this thing is crazy, by the way. There's crazy adjustment everywhere. All these thumb screws you see here, there's three here. I'll go around and do a close up in a minute. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like 10 on each side, 20 thumb screws for adjusting everything, as well as, you know, sliders for moving the seat backwards and forwards. Sliders for moving the pedal tray backwards and forwards, and I just showed you how the, the wheel deck moves. So that's like super configurable, which is excellent, and of course the purpose of this. And we have height and you know an angle adjustment as well for the pedal tray, for the wheel deck, and for the seat to go from that formula position to a GT position. Uh, it's kind of sat in the GT position at the moment. This plate here that the wheelbase is going to bolt to. If I was to bolt it where it is now, it's going to be way too high. The width steering was going to be like in my face here. So this is what they call option one mounting position. You can flip it upside down, which puts this plate underneath here, and that's called option two, or recommended position two, or whatever the hell it is in the manual. That's going to put the wheelbase down where I need it to be. Hopefully there's enough space in the middle here for the Acertec wheelbase to fit in. I think there should be, um, you know, and you think they would have thought of this. But yeah, we'll see how solid that actually is in use. The tray, pedal tray here, when it was in its utmost position, there was some play in this top right hand corner and it would clonk. Now in this, in this sort of lower GT position, it doesn't do it. I'm just gonna put it back up to the sort of what would be formula position and see if it still does it. Cause it might, you know, I tightened the thumb screws as much as I could, but and here's where your angle adjustment comes in. I mean, not that you tilt it this way, or whether you can even see that, but I'll show you um, a close up walk around in a minute anyway, and you'll see how everything adjusts. But yeah, you wouldn't tilt it this way. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Pedals would be pointing like off to the other side of the room. So we just slacken the thumb screws enough to be able to get this to move freely. There we go. And we put it all the way up here in what would be the formula position. And what's interesting, and I'll show you this again as I go around, it's actually labeled formula and GT um, on the sort of incremental adjustment. So you can see where you should be putting it on their recommendations in case you had no idea. Now, okay, that's gone, that's cool. Yeah, this corner had some play and it was clonking, but it must just have needed to seat itself properly. Uh, I hadn't yet moved it all the way down, all the way back up, but now that's solid. But yeah, so here's the, the other worry I have. Just like with the wheel deck, we've got some serious side to side wobble here. And I'm just pushing that with two fingers now. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, without any bracing across the pedal tray this way or that way, we may well get some flex in the middle here if you mount pedals individually into these slots. So we'll see what happens in use, but the side to side probably isn't too much of an issue because you don't really apply sideward pressure. You know, um, yes, you might be doing a bit of heel and toe, which will apply some sideways force. I mean, you may, it may wiggle, we'll see. Anyway, let's grab the camera, do a little close up walk around. Um, and I'll just show you all these adjustments in greater detail. Just standing here looking at it like this, I really do like the look of it. You know, I do love a tubular cockpit and the seat looks nice. The whole thing does look lovely um, and it's full of adjustments. So this is the wheel deck I was speaking about a minute ago. That I'm going to flip upside down so it will be under here and you'll see that when I get everything installed. But we've got this, this and this. And as you can see, different slots, 
there's a, a open slot here and then pre-drilled ones here which would allow you to not only tilt this how you want but raise the whole thing up and the whole thing down if you were to go to the topmost positions on the slots and then this one here will give you your angle like that in addition to that there is some angle adjustment on this as well you can see it's ever so slightly angled up at the moment by removing this and putting it in three different positions i believe there's also three holes oh yeah, you can see them from this side there's three holes there for this screw and three holes there and a hole there so lots of adjustment for this so that would be up and down tilt and of course slide forwards and slide backwards there are thumb screws again here for locking those off in position so up down tilt backwards and forwards this not only is it a brace you can put the optional monitor stand on which you'll see there it literally just bolts down and it's got a vase amount on it now i do have that but i haven't got a monitor to put on it um, oh, I don't have a monitor small enough to put on it is, is the actual problem. That's 86 inches. My single one upstairs is 65 and my triples are 55. Not that I could move those even if I wanted to. But should you want the optional monitor stand, that's what it looks like. And it literally just bolts onto here. And if you wanted to bring the monitor much closer to you, you could unbolt these and you can use any of these here to bolt it to as well. So lots and lots of adjustment just in this upper section here. Then we get down to the pedal tray, and this is what I meant by formula and GT, and the holes are all kind of marked for you. But this can go up and down, you saw me do that in the previous segment, and the same at the back here. So you've got all the adjustments, so you can adjust them um, parallel to just go up or down, or you can tilt them, or what I did earlier on, tilt it that way for absolutely no reason. So you've got up and down, you've got tilt, and then you've got your, your pedal slider here, it's a bit stiff to do one-handed, but you get the idea, you can slide it backwards and forwards on runners. So again, up, down, tilt, forwards and backwards. And then we have the same again for the seat at the back here, your thumb screw, your different slots and preset positions. Again, we have that also here. For, for when you make a formula position, you can really tilt it back. And I'll perhaps show some of these in a later segment when I've got everything attached. And then, of course, the seat is on a slider, as seats always are for moving forwards and backwards. You've also then, if you need more adjustments still, you can undo the bolts that secure it and put them in any of these slots here. And there is a second slot at the front there, just below where I've got it bolted there. Now, to actually do the seat adjustment, you would slacken these off, like so. These are not in preset holes, this one here. Slacken them off. And then you would twist this. Now, I've got no hand to support this whilst I do it, so hopefully it won't just fall down on me. And then you can set it down, and now you can see we're in the bottom position. And then I can twist it, lift it up using my head, release it, and now we're in. The uppermost position but you must remember to then do these thumb screws up afterwards and obviously if we look at the seat now that is a ridiculously tilted forward position way beyond any gt driving position you would ever need but that's where you could then pop these two screws out one this side one the other side and drop it down a couple if for whatever reason you wanted the seat height to be this high and that would put it in a more sensible and more usable position i just kind of went for middle settings upon installation just because you know i'm gonna I, I don't know where i want it um and it's not going to be a rig that i use on the daily so you know put it in the middle play around from there what else so that's so yeah um everything basically goes up and down and tilts and goes forwards and backwards whether it be your seat whether it be your wheelbase or your pedals so that's you don't get much more adjustment really than what you see there we have got a shift about fitted this side here again this is slotted so you can undo one here and one here and you could move this across you can move it back and across put it wherever you want we've also got tilt adjustment here for the top plate it's pre-drilled for whatever possible accessories you could think of handbrakes shifters you could even remove this all together and just bolt straight into these slots if you wanted to and this is really quite solid um, there's no front to back movement 
whatsoever in this. A tiny bit of side to side. I don't even know if it will show up on camera, but I think in use, you're never going to notice because when we're changing gear, it's always bang, 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 or, you know, sequential handbrake, we yank him. We're never, pardon me, applying much force side to side. So even if there is a little bit there, which there is just a tiny bit, it would never be an issue. So I, I really like the look of this so far. I do have my concerns about, you know, rigidity of this and the pedal tray, but everything else, I think I've done a great job as far as the design and the adjustability goes. It's all looking looking really nice. And that seat feels pretty comfortable. I have had a little sit in it, but we shall get some stuff on there now and I shall give it a test. Well, everything is all installed and ready to go. Now, I had a couple of issues here. I was going to test this using the Acer Tech Invicta wheelbase, which is just my favourite wheelbase of all time. Um, it's so smooth, it's so detailed, and it's got far more power than I would ever need. Um, but there was no way to physically bolt it to this wheel deck. None of the holes lined up with the slots in the bottom of the Acer wheelbase. And I have all the various mounting planes from Acer So the one that allows you to mount it just like flat, which is what you would do in this situation. Um, the front mount, the side mount, everything, but none of that's of any use apart from on an aluminium profile rig. With what we have here, it's the equivalent to like a flat base mount, but the problem is if I mounted it to the, to the top of this, as I mentioned earlier, it would be up here. I'd literally have a steering wheel in my face, so my plan was to mount it underneath. The issue with that then was, and have the wheelbase go down the middle, the issue with that then was, because of this adapter plate you use from Acer Tech, you couldn't have the wheel base go down the middle. It would have had to have hung out the bottom. So I would have then had my steering wheel down here. So I was like, oh, what? So I couldn't, use, I can't use that one. Um, the pedals I was gonna use were the Sim Grade Thera pedals, uh, which are ones that you individually mount because I was curious how much flex we get mounting stuff individually. Although with a wheel deck, uh, a pedal tray, pedal deck like this, you shouldn't mount them individually where you should use a base plate that's optional for your pedals. But I was curious, none of the holes lined up for those either. And I don't want to have to drill holes. Um, you know, this is just like an out of the box, out of box review for the average person that gets it and just wants to bolt their stuff on. Now, the other options I had was the CSL DD with its eight Newton meter power supply, which is what we've got and that bolted straight on. Although I've, bo I've bolted it from underneath. So it's actually upside down. Um, the wheelbase itself, but that puts it exactly where I want. Uh, and then the matching pedals as well. They have a 90 kilogram load cell, uh, which I don't even really run at 90 kilograms. I, I probably run nearer 70, um, both on these and on my main rig. But I can, you know, certainly press the pedal harder than that to test for flex uh, in the pedal deck. So it's not really an issue. Um, and as far as the flex in this assembly goes, even with an eight Newton meter wheelbase, we don't need eight Newton meters to see that there is already a fair bit of wobble and flex with just my fingertips on here. Now you may not see it from there, so I will put up a clip now of me doing it closer and you'll be able to see there is a fair amount of up and down play, no real side to side to speak of. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. I could make it worse by applying more force, but I think that might actually be the, the very tip of the rig, just slightly pressing into the carpet here. Now that's not unusual because a lot of people have carpets in their rooms, especially those of us in the UK or from colder climates. So this would be indicative of that type of setup with that extra force I applied a minute ago. But you know, you can see with just my fingertips, there's a fair bit of up and down anyway, a little bit irritating. Now, the pedal deck in the GT configuration, which is what I'm sat in now, also has a reasonable amount of flex without me applying hardly any pressure at all on the brake pedal. Again, I'll move the camera down there now, magically, and you'll see me doing this close up. There's a tiny bit of flex, well not tiny, a small amount of flex, but very noticeable. Um, in the whole sort of assembly there. And I'm not even, if I push the brake all the way, right, or as hard as I can with my leg, 
then you know it really does move but this is the sort of thing that in use you wouldn't really notice because it just kind of adds to the the feel of the pedal because it's repeatable it's exactly the same every time you do it but still um, what we're seeing here is a trade-off pardon me with adjustability versus rigidity to have all the adjustments we have you know to be able to just sort of undo things and move stuff around we're sacrificing rigidity so it's going to be a case i think of what you prefer whether you need things to be adjustable or whether you want them to be rock solid now i'll just i'm in a little race here in acc so i'll just carry on and you can see hopefully from the side there what sort of flex we get really, you know, in, in use. You may even hear the game sound being picked up on my microphone, but... Because really, you know, it's about, aside from me sort of synthetically flexing stuff around and applying force, it's more about what the actual driving experience is like. Do I notice that flex whilst driving, both in the, in the wheel deck and in the pedal tray, or do I not? We'll only do a quick sort of clip of me doing this, and then I'm gonna switch it to formula position, so you can see what I look like sat in it in formula position, and the difference we get in flex then as well, because the pedal tray, or pedal deck, flexes a lot more once you raise it up to go into the formula position. Right, so just pause that. Now let's swap it all around. It should also be interesting for you guys to see. So, slacken off these rear ones here. As I say, you must do these up because they're what actually sort of bear the weight rather than these little pins that come out. Drop it down to the bottom, make sure the locating pins are in both sides and do it up. Do these thumb screws up nice and tight. Now, do I want to tilt it even more? Should we just go full, full F1 and like put my, put this right up as well? I suppose we may as well, why not? I haven't actually done this front bit before yet yeah. but I think just like everything else slacken off the thumb screws and then lift it up yeah we do and then just do them up again so it's all you know pretty quick and easy which is what they've set out to do isn't it so that's that's the chair done. Now let's do the, the pedals. Raise these up. Nice and high. In fact, I'll put them all the way up because that's probably where they need to be in reality. Now, if you remember on the webpage, they do say it goes from one to the other in minutes. And I would say that's definitely correct. Not many minutes though. I mean, you guys can watch, the, if you're watching the video, you can see just how many minutes it will take me to do this. So that's the front done. Now we'll slacken the back. It would be amusing to try and press your pedals at that angle, wouldn't it? Or impossible. You have to do these thumb screws quite a way out, there we go, so they become free. Now you could, and probably should, angle the front one down maybe just one notch, because I think fully upright is probably gonna be too high, too upright, because the pedals are pointing, you know, this way a little bit. So let's just drop the front down one. And again, this is the beauty of this rig. It is super adjustable, isn't it? But, apparently, at the cost of rigidity. Oh, no. We can't then tilt the front down. 
That's interesting. The reason for that is because it curves away, meaning the pedal tray would need to come this way to be able to come further down. Yeah, because they both... Uh, is that right? Or am I just imagining things? Oh no, I'm just imagining things. I was going to say, I could have swore. Yeah, the arc matches, so that's fine. I was looking at it and I'm like, those arcs match each other, so it should come down, and it does come down. It was just me being an idiot. I hadn't undone the thumb screws enough. So, chair is done, pedals are done, and this, of course, is where Flex City really becomes apparent. <coughs> Well, <laughs> and of course now you're miles away, so this is where, so what I do, I'm also miles away from the steering wheel. Let's move the chair forward to begin with. So a little bit further. Where's that all the way? No, that's not all the way. Oh, that is pretty much bang on from now. Could maybe go back a notch? Yeah, so obviously, the flex uh, here hasn't changed because I haven't even moved this, I haven't needed to. Um, but, in fact, in fairness, the flex on the pedal tray is just the same as it was before. It's only there's now side to side wobble if you were to actually wobble it side to side because we've raised it up and put it high up. So let's continue this little race in this somewhat weird position. <laughs> I don't, I don't ever drive in Formula One position, and I don't ever play F1. In fact, I look like I'm asleep in the preview, because my head could do a being forward, couldn't it? It's a shame the headrest isn't adjustable. So we play in this somewhat relaxed position. Actually feels quite comfortable, if a little peculiar. Maybe next time I go out and drive my car in real life, I'm gonna put the seat really reclined pretend I'm using this rig. Well, I must say, I can't really feel any of that flex in use. We know it's there. And yes, if you had a really high torque direct drive wheelbase that you had turned up fairly high, you're probably going to notice it. Um, you know, this is only an eight newton meter. Well, I have turned it all the way up, um, so it is putting out as much as it physically can. And I only run about 10 newton meters, you know, anyway. Um, so for me, this isn't far adrift of what I would normally have. In fact, you know, a lot of the time, this little CSL DD would actually be enough for my sort of sim racing. I'm not, I'm not one that likes a really heavy steering wheel. In fact, I had an email from Fnatic yesterday. Something about, they got some really good deals on these at the minute. I'll have to have a look at the email and see what it was. If it's of particular interest, I'll make a quick video about it just to let everyone know what's going on. But um, yeah, the flex both in the pedal deck and the wheelbase doesn't really notice in use. I mean, but it is back the, yeah. Full, fully raised up, that is moving a fair bit. But you know, I think this is, this is, this is what we've got here. It's that trade-off between rigidity and adjustability. I've just gone from one driving position to a totally different driving position in probably what was five minutes maybe. I mean, you guys would have watched the video, you've seen me do it live, so to speak. There is a lot to be said for that. For those of you that are into both GT or Rally and also F1 and want to have that authentic feel, you know, you've got quick release, you can pop this wheel off, throw an F1 wheel on, throw a Rally wheel on, you know, um, have your handbrake and shift them out down here. So you, it, it, is, it does offer a lot. And also, you know, with the monitor mount available there, which would bring it, you know, you can have the, the monitor mount can be as close as sort of here. So you, you could really, you could really be in there. So that there is a lot going for this. The only negatives are 
this bit of flex we've got here and the same for the pedal tray. But in use, medium strength wheelbase, you know, eight to 10 newton meters, probably not gonna be an issue. Pedal tray flex, if you run a very heavy brake pedal, uh, Acer Tech Invictors, for example, then you're not gonna like this. Um, if, like me, you don't even use the full 90 kilos available on these CSL pedals, then yes, it is there when you look at it and it annoys me because I can see it, but your brain would kind of get used to it. I suppose it's just gonna come down to for 1,400 pound or 1,300 pound, whatever it was, are you happy to accept a little bit of flex traded off for huge amounts of adjustability? Because like we say, we've got forwards and backwards on, the, on everything. Forwards and backwards here, as well as up and down an angle. Forwards and backwards on the chair, as well as up and down an angle. And then forwards and backwards on the pedals, as well as up and down an angle adjustment. And it's all done really quite easily as well with just some thumb screws and your typical rails and runners. So it is well thought out in that respect and I can't really complain about the overall construction and quality. I know I had two, you know, threaded off bolts, but that obviously that's down to the individual that screwed them in um, at production. It isn't a, a reflection of sort of the, the build quality itself. Someone just put them in on the wonk and continued to do them up even after they'd gone tight. So, you know, that person deserves a little bit of a slap. Thankfully, it wasn't the threads in the cockpit that had got damaged, it was just the threads on the bolts. So as you see earlier, I just replaced the bolts. That is one advantage of having slightly cheap, softer bolts. They will let go <laughs> before the thread in the rig does. So should you cross thread something, you can just put a fresh bolt in and you'll be okay. So, um, yeah, there will be a link in the description to this. If there's a discount, that'll be there as well. It is a fair amount of money, but you do get a fair amount of adjustment. Um, as always, it's gonna be down to you as individuals, what you prioritize uh, and what you want and what you need. But as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.